Uh, Ms. Allard. Thank you. The presentation was great. Um, so a couple of my questions is, as far as um, transgender, I'm, I'm not familiar with all the terms, so bear with me. How will it affect um, certain shelters of, of women of domestic violence that might be impacted by a transgender? No, I can't. Um, and how do we address those issues? Is it in here? Or could you kind of help me with that a little bit? Sure. Thank you for your question, um, Assemblywoman Allard. I appreciate it. Yeah, um, it's usually like to get to current items. And so, has to be something. like I started off, I think you know this doesn't expand. This definition in particular, this piece doesn't expand our jurisdiction in any way. Um, when we talk about shelters, there are a lot of pieces that come into it. We're going to you know look at. Is there public funding? We'll look at, is it a religious-based organization? We're gonna look at, you know, is it a communal type space or are they, you know, individual? What type of privacy is there? So it's really hard to give a, a blanket answer for that um, because there are so many factors that come into it. When we talk about shelters, we also have to remember there's a right to privacy. Um, and that's how a lot of shelters are able to say, we're a women's shelter, we're a men's shelter, et cetera. Um, so all of these things come into play, and it's, it's not something that this definition in and of itself is going to affect. Um, it, it would, you know, it's not going to change anything from the current law to this new one. You said a lot of factors. Chair, may I? Thank you. You said a lot of factors come into play depending on the shelter. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to just say, how about the Hope Center? How will this impact the Hope Center? And so... As a former respondent, I, I'm not comfortable sharing exactly how we would deal with a, a specific respondent. Um, I don't know enough personally about them or their current structure to be able to actually answer that. Um, I'm happy to talk with you um, or someone from Hope more in depth. Um, but I can't answer that right now for you. I'm sorry. I can say, though, that just changing this definition you know, it's not actually changing anything else um, jurisdiction-wise or the type of case that we would bring in. Um, that would come into more, we're going to talk about the public accommodation definition, um, and you might have more questions um, once we get there, and I think we might be able to dive a little bit deeper there. But I'm not comfortable speaking to a specific um, former respondent or potential respondent on how this would apply to one person or organization. Thank you. Mr. Constant? Yeah, thank you. Hello there. <clears throat> and, you know, I will have to really sit down and think about all of these changes a lot. I think it's good stuff for the most part. And, uh, you know, the term and not being asserted for an improper purpose, you know, that's, it's an awkward term, but the fact is that's the big scary thing that a lot of people fear is that, you know, someone who is not, in fact, transgender is putting on a dress to go assault people. Right, and it's very rare that something like that happens. Like there might be one case or two that have ever been recorded out of all of the many, many cases that are brought across the country in any given day. And so I, I don't need an answer right now, but I would love to have some more thought put into and maybe a conversation about how that's addressed in the code as opposed to just in making a statement, well, that should be an asserted defense or, a, 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 you know, a, a statement made by a, a claimant of some kind. So I, I hope we can explore that a little bit, maybe offline. Absolutely. Thank you, Mr. Constant. Um, and I, I appreciate those concerns for sure. Um, and we have partnerships, you know, with a lot of small businesses in town, which who might have those types of concerns. Um, and we are available to them to, to work through this with them and make sure that we can craft something that works for our community. Um, but I do think that that is part of everything, really. It's part of all our work. It's part of all of the protected classes. And so that's something that comes into all of our definitions. Um, and it's just part of our investigation. It's something that we're going to look at for any complainant, whatever their, you know, whatever their claim might be. We're going to look at, you know, is this complainant sincere? Is, is this a, leg a legitimate um, allegation? Or is this being done, you know, because they're, they're mad at their employer, because, you know, wh whatever it might be. And so what I think might be a workable um, 
middle ground would be to remove it from there and find a place to put a statement along the lines of, you know, an assertion for an improper purpose is not allowed. Just a very simple phrase that could provide what you just said, the mm -hmm. blanket that that is considered in all of these cases. Mm -hmm. So it does strip it away, which I think then it would be very valuable and kind of helpful in this definition. Without something along those lines, I think that it, it leaves a hole. And so, but I think an, a separate location with just a, an asserted statement that an improper purpose is not allowed or something. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thank you. I'm happy to look, um, to, to look into that more. I think that's a great idea. So I appreciate that.